to supplement some of our morning lecture, I have this diagram. And so after oogenesis, we talked about how ovulation occurs. And then if sperm is present within 12 to 24 hours, what occurs? Let's use the Sharpie. Fertilization. And so if sperm is present, that oocyte, or after ovulation, it would be the mature ovum, would be fertilized. After fertilization, about 30 to 36 hours, you're going to find that first cleavage occur. And so that one nucleus be becomes two, two of those blastomeres inside of that zona pellucidum. And so we just have simple division there. And so this is about the first 36 hours. We'll call this the first cleavage occurs. And then those cells continue to divide. And so throughout day one, day two, day three, eventually two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16. And by about the third to fourth day, the cell, or the group of 16 cells inside that hardened zona pellucidum can actually leave the uterine tube, head down into the uterus. This is called the morula. So the morula is that hardened zona pellucidum filled with 16 of those undifferentiated cells. No differentiation has occurred, only mitosis at this point. So about the fifth day, we're going to begin to see differentiation of those cells, cells that begin to kind of determine where they are, what they are. We'll see a development of this embryonic cell mass, um, this hollow center, called blastocele, and then the cells, and you can see them kind of arranged on the outside. That's our trophoblast. And so this whole structure here would enter the uterus by about um, day three to four is when the morula forms. So four or uh, five or six is about when we have, if we look at your PowerPoint, we say day six. And so we're gonna see the blast, this, this structure or let's name it, blastocyst ball here, forms for about the fifth day. So that's about when you'll see these structures form here. So about the fifth to sixth day is about when you would see this structure implant or touch the uterine lining if it's going to do so. And so here again we can see that our if you're following along in Tortora or following along in the PowerPoint you would see that that trophoblast continues to divide. And so at this point and let's just call this implantation at this point of implantation your trophoblast is going to form two distinct layers, a cytotrophoblast, and then what we call a syncytial trophoblast. The syncytial trophoblast, based on uh, some physiology and some hormones released, are going to begin to dissolve that endometrial lining, so create that connection, while the cytotrophoblast is going to form sort of that circular embryonic structure. We can also begin to see some gastrulation or some separation and formation of structures. And gastrulation is actually formation of the beginnings of organs, but we begin to see these layers form. So from that embryonic cell mass to these distinct layers. And so here we begin to see sort of the beginning structures of our um, primary germ layers, our ectoderm and endoderm. So 
So I'll just write those there, ecto endoderm. And this occurs over, you know, day seven to eight. About the eighth day, eighth to twelfth day, here's where we're going to see major structures forming inside of that trophoblast. So inside of that structure that has at this point, if you can think of this as being the uterine lining implanted inside of the uterus. And so it's been pulled in. And so you're gonna to begin to see the maternal structures form around and these embryonic structures, the embryonic portions of the placenta form this direction. And inside the embryonic cell mass, you're gonna to begin to see the development of these primary germ layers. At this point, you'd see things like the amnion, or the yolk sac, and so let's call this the amnion. This could be the amniotic cavity. And this over here would be the yolk sac. Um, blood formation, uh, gamete formation, etc., occurs in that area. So this beginnings of an embryonic disc is forming at this point. And so we're going to be, we can just say gastrulation is beginning to occur. On this eighth to twelfth day. And so kind of take a look at this a second. Let's see what we, before we move on to the bigger step, let me get this straightened here. And so we go from fertilization, cleavage, morula. Ask yourself when this is occurring and where we are. We're still in the uterine tube at this point. The morula moves down into the uterus. Here by about the fifth to sixth day, we have a blastocyst. We can begin to see the formation of that embryonic cell mass. Into the sixth day and seventh and eighth day, implantation has likely occurred. And so here, that trophoblast is going to form the cytotrophoblast or the cell trophoblast and the syncytial trophoblast, which kind of makes its way into the endometrial lining or forms the embryonic side of what will be the placenta. Days eight through 12 is when I said gastrulation is going to occur. We begin to see the formation of that embryonic cell disc, what we call the amnion and the yolk sac. <clears throat> As this continues to occur, and my that's supposed to say day 14 there. Here we really see the development of our primary germ layers. And so these primary embryonic layers that will go on to become that embryo, that fetus eventually, and then that, that child, that adult, and so these major structures that compose all of us started out as these simple little cell layers. Isn't that just amazing? I don't know. I think it's wild. But you will be required to know what happens at each of these steps, what the main events are. And then when we begin to see the development of those primary germ layers, what those layers form. And so here... You know, off the amnion, we have the ectodermal layer, mesodermal layer in the middle, and the endodermal layer. And so these structures are what will eventually become your outer, I'm trying to make sure that you can see me here, trying to become your organs, your structures. And so just to name a few, your mesoderm, I always think meso muscle. So muscle, connective tissues. Skeleton. Meso muscle. Um, the endoderm continues to develop um, into things that are inside. So think endo, inside. Things, uh, the epithelial lining of your uh, gastrointestinal tract, your GI tract, and uh, respiratory system. Well, ecto 
you think ecto, like ectopic, outside, this becomes things like your epidermis. And then we've already talked about this a little bit. We kind of did our story about melanin and why that was important, um, protecting the cell, et cetera, vitamin D. We had a whole talk about it, about epidermis and your nervous tissue actually form from that same layer. You know, we talk about folic acid and all of that. I won't bore you with the story again, but epidermis and nervous tissue form from that same ectodermal layer. That's important to remember for, you know, for those of you going into nursing and pre-med. So mesoderm, muscle, connective tissue, ectoderm, outside epidermis, as long as you know that the nervous system is connected to that, and then endodermis inside, GI, respiratory. So please take a look at Tortora, read through there, and then use your presentation and hopefully this supplemental video helps um, some of your learning.